Uh, today, uh, we're going to learn about a very important uh, topic uh, that I know that caused a lot of misunderstanding in the past, the concept of Messiah, the two Messiah, the Messiah of uh, the son of Judah and the Messiah, the son of, of uh, Joseph. Most people are not aware of that, but they are very uh, prevalent in rabbinical literature and a legend, in Talmudic legend. So let's begin. Uh, and we, we are, where are we now? We are at the end of the book of Genesis, as you know. And at the end of the book of Genesis, at the very end, Jacob calls his son, it says to them the following, assemble yourself and I will tell you what will happen to you at the end of days. That's chapter 49, verse one. Thus at the, at the end of at the book of Genesis, begin, it begins with the very beginning of, of, the, of the world, the Big Bang, chapter one. It starts with the beginning of the world and it ends with a Jacob prophecy, prophesying about the end of days. So turn out to the book of Genesis. Think about it. It covers the entire human, not the earth, the world history, especially mankind history until the end of time. The entire span of the history of Earth, the entire evolution until the end of time, the end of the book Genesis. And there is no other book in the Torah or outside the Torah that covers such a huge span of history from the beginning to the end of time. There's no, no other. You can't find any other such book. Now you, you may ask, how could Moses, living 3,500 years ago, tell us about such a vast story about the entire history of Earth from the beginning to the end of time? Is it really credible? What could he know, you may ask, having been raised and trained in Pharaoh's home surrounded with idolatry, witchcraft, worshiping death, holy cows, and gods that look like birds and crocodile. How could this, how could Moses, rising in that, that environment, tell us about the history of earth till the end of time is really credible? Indeed, we are totally surprised to learn, as we have seen, that Moses' account of creation, at least, in Genesis chapter one, is really, really very accurate. So credible, so unusual to his time, that it, uh, it can perfectly match our scientific knowledge uh, for, uh, that we know from our science as we discuss it early in our classes. So his words in Genesis chapter one are very accurate as he described the six days of creation covering the entire evolution, including many catastrophes. That's amazing. Precisely the catastrophe that hit our planet during those six days of, of, uh, of creation as we discuss it in detail in our classes of idolatry, chapter one. And if Moses' words in chapter one are true and credible, so must be his word at the end of chapter one, where he described how Adam was made by Elohim with a heart capable of perceiving and accepting the Shekhinah YHVH. Unlike all the other creatures, that set us apart from all the other creatures. We are 
made not just smart homo sapiens, but creature that can, whose heart may acceptable, accept uh, Shekhinah's value, and we, we may follow her values in the Lokim world. Thus, according to Moses, if Adam accepts the Shekhinah into his heart and follow her way, mankind would be deemed very good at the end of days, and they, we will marry entering the next stage, which is the Sabbath. And this, and since Moses' words in Genesis chapter one are credible and true, as we just seen, so must be his word at the end of the book uh, be true. When, when Jacob, when he tells us about Jacob uh, assembling his sons and telling them what happened in the rest of history, this part is also should be credible and true. And, and as, we, as, as, as it said, it is described there at the end of the chapter, at the end of the book, um, uh, Jacob tell his sons about the two, what will happen at the end of time. And he also tell him about the two messiahs, the son of Judah and the son of Joseph, who will lead the Israel and the entire mankind in that path to the end of time. Moreover, at his last word before, before at his bed, uh, deathbed, just before he pass, pass away, passes away, he's going to select one of them to be the, the final Messiah. We will see which one of them he select. So again, uh, Moses establishes his credibility in chapter one. It's amazing how he, he accurately described the, the history of the world of what until uh, creation of mankind. Then <coughs> he, dis, he, dis, he described at the end of the chapter, this book, what will happen from, from Jacob onward to the end of the time, how you, a Messiah will lead humanity to the end of the days. Now let's pay attention to how the story of the Messiah is presented here. We need to find out what's the difference between the two messiahs and uh, how, how it came about. What is the story of those messiahs? And as we're gonna see that uh, uh, it, the story of those Messiah come with a typical pattern of the book of Genesis, which goes from failure to remedy, failure and remedy. I'll tell you how. Uh, the Torah, after we discussed it before, uh, the Torah goes in the book of Genesis from one commandment to the other, describing big failure, and then describe how the failure uh, can be remedied, remedied or corrected, tikkun. For instance, uh, the Torah presents mankind failure in, in the Garden of Eden, chapter two, where Adam and his wife violated only two commandments they had, they could violate it in Eden, namely idolatry and adultery, we discuss it. Idolatry they could, could violate by disobeying God, God command and eating, eat, eating by eating the food. And adultery they could violate if a woman who is married cohabit with a serpent. Lo and behold, uh, they, they violated the only two commandments they had. It was a major failure that cost them Eden. But at the same time, the story offer a remedy to prevent such a failure. Since by the eating the fruit, uh, they, they received a new awareness they didn't have before of the Shekhinah of Hashem, a holiness and a, forgi and a forgiving, forgiving power. 
they, they perceive the holiness immediately after the eighth fold because they cover their nakedness. The naked because Hashem, perception of Hashem, the Shekhinah in your heart, make you ashamed of your awake nakedness. Their holiness make you, uh, make you ashamed of nakedness. She doesn't like nakedness, sexual promiscuity. And at the same time, they also learn about her power as a, forgi and a forgiving power. They learn it very on a hard way. Uh, God expected them to repent, they failed, and they lost Eden, but at the same time, they learn that the next time they sin, they can confess, ask forgiveness, ask forgiveness and be forgiven. So they, they lost something, but they gained something very big that allowed them to live now on earth. So a failure end up with a remedy. The, same, the next story is the same, a big failure. As soon as they came down to live on earth, humanity stumble again, now over the next commandment, not on idolatry, adultery, but over number three, bloodshed, starting with kind killing Abel, and uh, ended up with no flood. It was a major failure. Yet, it, it also came with a remedy, because after the flood, Noah received the rainbow covenant with the bloodshed law that were not given to mankind before, he also received the new commandment, number seven, that support and enhance our stance against cruelty. It teaches us, number seven, teaches us uh, not to eat blood and to overcome the natural blood, animalistic, I would say animalistic, blood, blood thirsty, thirsty heart. As, as natural creature, in, in our evolution, we, our heart is still long or uh, uh, inflicted by, by, by animalistic drive to be cool sometime and to a bloodthirsty heart. And that bothered Noah a lot. He all, that's why he didn't want to procreate. He thought that the bloodshed will return and the flood will return. So Hashem gave him a new commandment uh, that tell him if you teach your, if you teach the, the, your children the, the law of bloodshed and the new commandment, they will be less prone to to repeat the the, the scene of the flood or the gener generation of the flood. So failure end up with a, and with a, with a remedy. The same thing happened the next time. When mankind now stumble over number four this time, oh, it's organized theft. Uh, Abraham generation that uh, discovered the, the, how to create empires and sp uh, based on slavery. So organized theft. This was a major failure of the, of the generation. Yet it came with a remedy because Abraham learned how to call God a new name, the owner Adonai who owns everything. And he got a new commandment, circumcision that reminds mankind that we are slave of God. And that's why we cannot steal anything that belongs to him. Certainly not, not to be, slave to others, and so on. And so the note after Abraham, the same token, failure followed by remedy. The Torah moves on as we learn uh, to, this, to describe the next failure, which was uh, humanity stumbled over number four, on the five now, uh, injustice and civil disorder. Uh, we saw that in the life story of uh, Jacob, fighting for 
is justice and civil right. It was a major failure of the, of the generation, yet it came with a remedy. Because as, as Jacob st struggled over there, uh, he found a remedy. What was the remedy? Uh, uh, and to create a new, a new society. It, Jacob, Jacob's name was changed to Israel. In a, and Israel will be a new society where uh, is a pledge at the, at the level dream to incorporate mercy value, Shechina value into the law of the land, which is un, unparalleled to any other society. So to, to create his pledge was to build a new society named Israel, who whose laws would be send a slave free after six, six years, uh, leave the field free to the poor every seven years, and so on. We discuss it. All kind of those value of mercy and compassion to the poor and to the, uh, and to, and to the uh, desolate and to, and beside many, many, many other laws that. Uh, uh, express the passion for the poor and uh, the oppressed. So the value of Hashem into, they make it into the law of the land, not be left to your good heart. So such a society called Israel will, will uh, serve as an as example for mankind who emulate it and the Shekhinah will also dwell in their land. So the failure that uh, Jacob was born into, into society which, uh, which had no human right, no, no recognition of any passion or compassion or, and so on. Uh, the society, the remedy, uh, Jacob offered a remedy for such a society by, by uh, pledging to create a new society called Israel when it return home. And now as we, again, a failure of humanity ending up with a remedy. Why I'm saying it is because now the story repeats itself is number six, and we move to a blasphemy. Again, the, the story starts with a big failure this time the failure of Jacob family itself of committing blasphemy and uh, desecration of God's name, uh, ending up with a remedy. The remedy for blasphemy would be the Messiah. Okay, that's the pattern that I want to put, point out. The pattern is repeated now with the last chapter of, with the story of Joseph. Failure of the of the family ending up with a winning, with a remedy. And the instruction, and when jo Jacob, before his death, he see now the future, how mankind will proceed from now on to the end of time. And, uh, and, and, and can uh, avoid blasphemy and create a new, new society that emulate uh, Israel and, and incorporate Hashem values into the law of the land. So Israel will be only his example uh, to other nations. So again, uh, this time the failure is of blasphemy is Jacob family itself. Now, as before, each time the talk uh, repeat uh, a stumbling over one commandment and the remedy, it also en enlarges the concept. That we said that blasphemy until now was just a prohibition to curse God. That's just a private or public, but doesn't matter. Anyone who curse God or, or distorted his name is committing blasphemy. This was until Jacob. Now with the advent of Israel, as a, as a nation, as a congregation, as a nation, 
as a public, who, uh, there is a new aspect of blasphemy, of making one commit blasphemy if he lead others to despise God. Not that he himself curse God, but he makes other people despise God. How can it be? Can be how can it be done? Well, we said the only way to do it is if a person who is supposed to be a follower of the Torah, a Torah scholar, or, or advocating the Torah, or a big believer in the Torah, uh, if he or she uh, is performing something very ugly in the eyes of the other, the, the point is in the eyes of Isaac, others. He not only violates that particular law, but he also uh, caused other people to despise the Torah that he learned, causing, a, 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 actually violating blasphemy, causing other people to despise God's name, a desecrate God's name. So here is a royal family of Jacob who is now returning to Israel and it's, it's just the time to, to fulfill his dream, pledge in his dream and to create a new society called Israel on the new land, starting with a small family and maybe uh, as a, in time getting bigger and bigger and creating a new society instead they sank into terrible, terrible behavior that uh, is very difficult to even, even comprehend how, can, how could they do it because no, no other people, even idolaters wouldn't do it. Selling uh, their own brother to slavery, to the sex slave market in Egypt. So when such a family, royal family, perform that kind of misbehavior, that's called desecration of God's name. Because whoever know them, whoever understand, know that they are supposed to be so faithful to God, and they preach around, uh, uh, and, and sees what they are doing, uh, say, oh, this, they, they, uh, the, the Torah is not, not capable of controlling their behavior. The Torah has no value and God has no value. Their faith is not. So it, they cause other people to despise the Torah. And that be, misbehavior is a sheer desecration of God's name. So, that the, so the very family is supposed to be a model to sanctify God's name in the eyes of Father, sank into a deep blasphemy. So blasphemy, they don't curse God, but they do even worse. They cause other people to, dis to despise the Torah. So now, uh, we, as we, said, we discussed it last time, and, and uh, because of that misbehavior that Shekhinah depart from them, and, uh, and leaving them, uh, leaving them in the eyes of you know, him alone, who now feel free, so to speak, to execute the verdict to send him down to Egypt. As he, as Elohim has told Abraham that his descendant will walk, will walk, will, be, go, will go down to servitude in, in Egypt for 400 years. So the 400 years, started this with Abraham and Isaac, and it was postponed because of Shekhinah didn't defend them, sweeten the, the verdict. But now that Shekhinah is departing, well, Elohim is now free to execute this harsh verdict and to send them down to Egypt. And we, we said that this is the only place in the, in the Torah that you see God intention, Elohim intention. It's clear where Elohim is moving things around down to Egypt. And it's, a, it's behind the scene because each of the heroes of the story is not even aware of it. 
And that's how God runs the universe, our lives, uh, behind the scene. Each one of us move in, move in his own sphere, having a free, totally free will to, to do whatever we want, but Elohim somehow managed to, to combine those points in our lives one to another in such a way that we, he will execute his own will without us, without us being in the world. That's called kingship. All right, so here we are where we, <coughs> we discussed it last time. And we ended up with the, with the understanding that the family sank into deep depression. Deep depression. Uh, the value of the Shekhinah departed from them. Jacob lost his prophecy. And Judah, and, and Judah actually went down to associate from his greatness to, be, to associate with the, the local uh, Canaanite, actually married a Canaanite woman. And, every, and everything is fall, falling apart. Yet, so, Yet, so the, 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 the failure is big. Like before, the, the failure is, is large and, 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 and big, like in Noah time with bloodshed, uh, or Abraham with theft. Now with blasphemy. So the failure is, is a failure of, of the Jacob family. That's the only one. They are the only one who actually commit blasphemy. In a new in a new meaning of of public, because they are they they are the one who supposed to give a good example. So this very family fail, but it, the story end up with recovery. And the, the Torah describe how two figures recover themselves on their own. Discussed it last time, Judah with Tamar. When he comes out in public and admits his fatherhood to everybody to see, he is a big judge. And he, he admits that he is the one who cohabited with this supposed authority, she is in Howard. And so he is not ashamed to admit that in order to save her life, her life. Otherwise, she wouldn't be burned to, to death, alive. So he commit, he, he actually commit, uh, performed, if you want, a sanctification of God's name because his, his behavior was such unusual that whoever see that and understand where it comes from, said, so, wow, this is a Jacob's son. Look what he's doing. He's not ashamed to admit and confess his sin, his failure, and to go that he went to the, this harlot. And, and he did it to save her life. So that's why the Shekhinah name appears in that story three times, you see. So although the entire part of of the end of Genesis is written under the Elohim law. Many, many times the name of Elohim appears. But when the name of Shashin appeared in Judah story three times only. So he sanctified God's name, Shashin, and that caused the Shashin to come down on him. So he is the first one to reverse the, 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 the trend. So the remedy for the desecration of God's name is sanctification of God's name. And he did it. The second one who did it, even in a bigger fashion, was Joseph, with his master wife. We learned it last time that his, his, uh, reject, his refusal to succumb to her uh, demand uh, although he knew what's going to happen to him, 
uh, he refused that and he paid for it by losing his job and being thrown to jail. He could have been killed. Now, whoever sees that, especially the master who knew him, they knew that he, he did it for the name because of the name of God was on his mouth all the time. Every, time, every day, everything he did, that he did, he said, oh, with Hashem help, with Hashem help, with Hashem help. So the master knew that uh, what, what, his, what Joseph was doing was uh, refusing to commit adultery because of uh, his belief in, 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 the God, in God, in the God of Israel. So, uh, and, and in the eyes of the master, and perhaps in the eyes of the wife, and perhaps in the eyes of all the people in the, in the household, and all the people who knew Jacob, uh, he, they, they attributed Joseph's unusual uh, refusal and give so, uh, surrendering his life for Hashem uh, name, they attributed it to, to his faith. And by this, uh, he, he made them honor God's name. He sanctified God's name in the eyes of others. Remember, the new, the new thing about blasphemy that appeared in our story that wasn't there before is Honoring God's name in the eyes of others, not in your own eyes, but doing something that glorify the honor of God in other people's eyes, being uh, other people from Israel or, or other nations. Here, here uh, Jacob himself is an Noahide, and he sanctified God's name in the eyes of other Noah. So here, uh, no wonder that uh, <clears throat> uh, the Shekhinah name appears in, on, over Joseph's story eight times in just few verses. In the most dense fashion in the Torah, I can't find any other, uh, any other story in the Torah that's so full of Hashem name. Eight times in just few verses. So the Shekhinah came down very impressively or forcefully, forcefully on Jacob, on Joseph. He carried the Shekhinah back on his shoulder. So here are the two figures, Jacob, Ju uh, Judah, and, and Joseph. Each one elevating himself from the depression of the family from a deep spiritual depression that they sank into at the beginning. And now they recover and each one carries the Shekhinah on his, on his own name, uh, ready to lead uh, the rest of the family. Now, what happened to the rest of the family, to the other brothers? They, uh, they also need to come up from their own depression. Now, if if uh, if uh, uh, Judah, both Judah and Joseph now qualify to be the leader of the pack, and to to each one of them can produce a potential Messiah, Messiah of son of Joseph and Messiah of John of Judah. Each there are two different. Messiah, so it's, and we'll talk about uh, the difference between them. And we'll have to see which one of them will prevail in history. Now, the Messiah cannot, would not come unless the rest of Israel, the rest of the family, the other 10 brothers, repent too. They need to repent. And this is again the story. So, what uh, the, the Torah now changes its focus on the ten brothers and describing their repentance in in beautiful, beautiful way. It, it's amazing, amazingly impressive and beautiful. Let's see how, how it describes the family, the rest of the 
the rest of the the rest of the of the what happened to the rest of the brothers. So uh, the Torah tells us. Let's let's go to the story of the brothers now. We know what happened to Judah and Joseph. Now, what happened to the other brothers? So the Torah tells us that Pharaoh's dream came true, and that Joseph had the as Joseph predicted, and the seven good good year of plenty passed away. He accumulated a lot of grain. And this was followed by seven bad, bad years of hunger, as I predicted, that plagued not only Egypt, but the entire region. People from all over, from all the countries around in the Middle East, flocked to, left their home and flocked to Egypt to fetch for food. That's the only bread the grain they could they could have that could 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 have gain. So they all flocked to Egypt. He Joseph became the real master of the Middle East, not only of Egypt, but the entire region. Actually, they were all slaves to him. He could do whatever he wanted. Indeed, if you remember, one of the things he did uh, when he came to power was to, as Rashi says, uh, he told him to, to the Egyptian uh, to, com- to circumcise himself and keep the seventh commandment. So at that point, uh, in, at least in Joseph's mind, all Noahide, all nations, including Egypt, were supposed to abide by eight commandments including not only the Noah 7, but also Abraham 8. And, 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 and the, the, the nine, number 9 was st- still not really effective at that point. It was too early. So as he came to power, and people start flocking down to Egypt, and the hunger finally struck Jacob and his family too. And the verse says like this. Hear what the verse says about what happened now. And Jacob saw that there was a break in Egypt. The Talmud says, what do you mean he saw that the break of Egypt? He saw that someone there is unusually merciful. He's not, to, he's not used to such an Egyptian ruler. Instead of taking an army, and conquering the entire Middle East, because everybody was so weak and hunger, hungry, oh, the, the leader sits there on the throne and sell food, feed the hungry. That was unusual for me. He couldn't understand what, who is this guy sitting there on the throne? He's certainly not behave, behaving like a regular Egyptian. Yet he lost his prophecy, so he couldn't really see Joseph. He couldn't understand that this is his own son sitting there. But he saw that there was a hunger, a break of the hunger in Egypt. And Jacob says to his son, they are called now his son, why are you fearful? For he said, behold, I have heard, I have heard that there, there is a break in Egypt. Go down there and buy us for food. So that they might be, they might, that we may survive. So in the, the verse continues. Joseph's ten brothers then went down. Now they call ten, Joseph's ten brothers went down to buy grain and from Egypt. But Jacob did not send Benjamin, the brother of Joseph, with the brother, because he said an accident would be following him. Now, the, the, uh, the children of Israel, he said, then came to buy grain among those who came. For the famine was hot in, in the land of Canaan. Now, in here, in just two short verses, the brother name changes from Jacob's son to Jacob's brother to the children of Israel. At first, they are Jacob's sons, regular sons. Then when he go, they go down to, to fetch food, 
uh, they actually called brother, Joseph brother, because in their heart, they wanted to, 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 to take the opportunity and to seek, to search for Joseph in the slave market. The Rashi says, actually out of 10 intentions in the heart, nine was for, for, for brothers, for the brother, only one portion was for food. And that was in contrast to the other people around them that are called the, the one who had no name. They are the Torah refer them, the, those who came. In a time of hunger, sea of people will flock down to Egypt in, when people are hungry, that the, all the barrier of, of royalty or, or rank or nationality, all barriers fall. You see just a sea of multitude of people going down uh, to, 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 to Egypt to, to fetch, to buy some food to save their life. Who has the time to think about anything else? And here among this sea of the people who came are 10 brother who do the opposite. They have only po one portion in the heart for the food and nine of the nine of nine, nine portion of the heart is to seek the brother and they are called the children of Israel. And the name is elevated to Israel. They repent and now the, the nation called children of Israel is born. Can you, define, can you find a better description of the birth of Israel? The children of Israel are born on a foreign land uh, among as 10, 10 people, the first congregation of 10 people, uh, brothers go to search for the lost one. Among the sea of people that are completely indifferent, hungry. So the, that's the definition of Israel. It's amazing that the circumstances of Israel, children of Israel are born here. So they are elevated to the new congregation called the children of Israel. Or if, to, if you want to see, that's a nucleus of the nation of Israel. Now, as they come down to to Egypt that split into, into 10 gate, gate. Uh, each one uh, uh, select another gate to search for the brother. And uh, finally they stand up before Joseph. They, he, they recognize them right away. They, they don't recognize him because he's dressed like, he look like uh, Pharaoh's wife. So they bow down to his, uh, go to the ground and uh, he, when, he, when they do that, he, rem he remember, he remind, it reminded him his dream that 11 stars will bow to him. And so here are 10 brothers, where, uh, where is the 11 one? So he asked him, he asked him do, you have another, do you have another brother? They say, yes, uh, we have uh, Benjamin, his father, Benjamin, but his father didn't want to send us, send him. So Joseph, recognize them, but he's not so sure about how they stand, if they repented about the sin or not. So he, he decided to he, he arrest Simon, he manipulated him. He, this, he, he arrest Simon and tell him next, go home and don't come back without your, 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 your younger son, because otherwise I, I will assume that you are spies because you enter the city with 10 different gates. So in order to prove your, your innocence, bring me the next, the, your, the next time your younger brother. Lo and behold, uh, uh, the, after a while, the food, uh, the food goes, the food is, uh, um, uh, the food, uh, um, the food in 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 Jacob uh, home is uh, uh, they have no more food, so uh, they Jacob asked him to go down again, and and the, and the son said we cannot without Benjamin. Joseph uh, ja jo Jacob refuses. Here come Judah. We know Judah that he already inspired by Shechina name three times. Judah come forward 
on his own initiative and tell his, tell his father, I'm, I'm a guarantor. Take me, I take me the guarantor. I'm a guarantor, personally guaranteed to you the safety of Simon, of Benjamin, and all the others. If, if I fail, take me for your slave. Take me as a slave. I will be guilty. He become a guarantor for the rest of it. Of the brother, which in history turned out true. Because in history, if you know, all the 10 tribes disappeared from history. They became idolaters. And uh, the only tribe that remained loyal to Jacob is Judah. So he, Judah is, a, is, a, is proven to be a guarantor. We, the J Jewish people of today, all, all of us descend of Judah, faithful to Jacob. All the other tribes are gone. So here, but he come out forward voluntarily. And as he, as he come to facing uh, Joseph, who is uh, Judah assumed that he is an Egyptian ruler, uh, it is Judah who come forward and, and challenge Joseph and also tell Joseph, take me, take, uh, uh, when, uh, I mean, the story is that uh, I skip a point here because Joseph now, manipulate them and want to arrest Benjamin. So Judah now come forward and say, take me as a slave for Benjamin, uh, and, and in lieu of Benjamin. Now, Joseph did it because he was not so sure if they would defend Rachel's son, because he, was, he and Benjamin were the only sons of Rachel. Uh, Judah and the rest of the brother were the sons of other women, a wife of Jacob. So he thought maybe uh, they still have a grudge against Rachel, so they will not defend Benjamin. And here, Judah, although he's a Leah son, he come forward and offer himself as a slave in lieu of Benjamin. That caused jo Joseph to, to burst in crying. And by the way, he hear them talking and they say, we are guilty. This, everything has befallen us because we sold uh, our brother. We hear them, we understand Hebrew. They are not, they, they are not aware that he understand them. And when he, hear, when he hear them repenting, and he see that Judah is offering his life for, 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 ben, for Benjamin, Joseph now come out and, and uh, reveal himself to them as their brother. And here come key words. He come and say that, says to them, uh, it, the, it, it says them something that defined the role of Messiah, the son of, 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 of Joseph. He says to them, I am Joseph. Is my father still alive? And he says to them, and now, if be not distressed, nor, nor reproach yourself for having sold me here. For it was to be a provider that Elohim has sent me ahead of you. For this, uh, well, this has been two of a uh, hundred years in Sutherland, and there are five, five more years Go, uh, come, go back and bring your, your father to me because I am here to sustain you. Now, the scene is very important. He sees himself as a messenger of God sent to save his people. He, he, his face, they stand before him, he's facing them. And, uh, and, uh, he, see, and he says to them, God, God has sent me to provide you with the, all the natural things that you need, bread and sustain you, defend you and sustain you till the hunger is gone. So this is Joseph, the messenger of God, is, is sending, being sent from God to, to protect the natural need 
of the Jewish people, to provide them statehood, to provide them a livelihood, uh, let's say like a, a, a self-Israel today. So many, many rabbis will say that the, uh, uh, Israel is a, a, a personalization of, of uh, this uh, Messiah, the son of, of Joseph. So anyone, uh, the, the Messiah of Joseph, uh, son of Joseph, is not necessarily a person. Many legends appear about this Messiah of, of Joseph. Uh, some say that uh, Luke uh, quoted Zechariah, that uh, 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 some, some important person will die at the Megiddo, Megiddo, Valley of Megiddo, uh, killed by uh, the God enemies, and they attributed to the son, to this Messiah. But that's not necessarily true. Uh, the prevalent, uh, I skip all the Midrashim and the Erev Rav and uh, all the name of the king who are gonna kill the, this Messiah. And the, because the, the current perception of, of the Messiah of, of Joseph is anyone who helped Israel to, to, you know, to survive in a natural way as a nation, to provide them country, homes, army, food. That's, that's, that's Joseph as, the same way as Joseph provided for his family in Egypt. As opposed to Judah, whose, whose, fam, whose brother stood behind him. And he faces the, 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 the others, the, the external enemy, the, the, you perceive the, the, the Egyptian ruler, he, he, his face was facing the Egyptian ruler and, enemy, and his brother clogged, uh, assembled himself behind him, supporting him. So again, the Messiah of Joseph, his face is facing the congregation. He is sent from God to save them as opposed to Judah and the Messiah, the son of Judah, who is supported by, 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 by Israel, who elected by Israel, supported by Israel, and his task is to defend Israel and to defend their honor in the eyes of the nation. So these two messiahs, two, two, two different personalities, two different messiah. So the common, co common uh, I mean, I, I'm running fast, I want to finish it. Uh, uh, the, two, the two Messiah present two stages. One is the uh, uh, son of Joseph is in charge of uh, uh, providing Israel with natural need to recover from exile, to go, to go back to Israel, to establish a state, whereas the uh, uh, Judah, the, the, son, the Messiah, the son of Judah, is, suppo is supposed to find, come next and, and, and help Israel to face the nations. The, the whole posture is different. Who prevail? Jo as jo as Jacob, let's go back to Jacob, who at the final, ch final chapter there, on a bad, bad uh, death, he examined all the children, tell each one false merit. When he come to Judah, he said, Judah, your brother, uh, I'll support you. The scepter shall not be removed from, from, the, from Judah. So he endowed Judah with the, with the task of being the final the final Messiah, because he says, to you, all the nation will bow. Uh, and uh, so from the two of them, uh, Jacob sees Joseph in the first step, uh, the provider, and Judah is the one who, who takes over and, and present Israel and restore the honor in the, in the eyes of the nations. So the nations are very much in the story. The entire book of Genesis is based on the nations. They move from one commandment to the others. They need to, so far, at the end of the book, they need to, to 
comply even with the circumcision. It's only later that Moses take, take circumcision away. But at this point, the nations are very much involved in the story. And the whole purpose of Israel is to provide leadership and example of all the other nations to follow. And the Messiah, the first Messiah of Joseph is to help Israel itself to recover physically, financially. And, and the Messiah, the son of Judah, which is David, the son of David, uh, is his function is to restore or to present Israel toward, toward the other nations. And all the nations will follow him, as Jacob says. Now, if we end up here, the book of Genesis starts with the history of, 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 uh, of the evolution. Then it went up to the history of mankind until the birth of Israel. Once the Israel is around and recover from his depression, and, and once Jacob has uh, put up the plan to where well, humanity will go, led by the two Messiah, once we have that, the plan is of an Okim plan is now fulfilled. Because the, the, the so, so generally start with a plan that mankind will for incorporate the Shekhinah into, into their heart. So now we know how it's going to be, be done. Uh, the, 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 the humanity will incorporate the Shekhinah in the heart by following Israel's example uh, by the leadership of the Messiah. So that's why the story started with Elohim end up with Elohim and, uh, and, and end up with Israel drawing the Shekhinah back down to earth and offering leadership to mankind. So that's in short, in very short, uh, out, uh, outskirt or, or outline of what this enormous story is all about. We could have spent much more time that we had it on, on discussing each step by itself. So any question for me when I stop here?